Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I'm here today with a project for Not Too Shabby. I'm going to be using the Happy Halloween stamp set to make another cute, quick and easy Halloween card using some masking and ink blending. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Earlier in the month, I shared a look at Not Too Shabby's Halloween stamp set, and I created the card you see over here on the left. I will have a link to this video in the description box below so you can check it out. At that time, I told you I would be back to use my favorite stamp in the set, the cute little candy corn witch, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. Now, I've also used this stamp set in a live on TikTok and another one on Instagram. Now, unfortunately, I did send out the card that I made on TikTok, but I have a picture up on the screen now. And the one over here on the right, I did during a live on Instagram, which I will link that video in the description box below if you're interested in watching it. I use the same technique for all of those, some masking and ink blending, and I am having so much fun with this set, so I'm super excited to use it again today. Now, if you do like what you see today, as of the time I'm recording this video, there are only two of these stamp sets left, so you might want to check that out. And while you're there, I do have a coupon code in the description box below that'll save you 10% off most of the items in the store, including the Happy Halloween stamp set. As I get into the process of the video, as I add other products or tools, I will let you know about that. But if I do leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For my card, I want to create a little cluster of those candy corn witches, or kind of like a coven of candy corn witches. To do this, I'm going to start by creating three masks of the candy corn stamp. I just got out a rectangle of my masking tape and using the same black ink that I'll use later for the stamps, I stamped three onto this little strip. Now at this point, I could have cut these out with my fine tip scissors, but since I have a brother scan and cut, I did take these off screen to cut them out. And now I have three cute little candy corns that are gonna help me with my masking. I will be coloring these in later with alcohol markers, so I cut a piece of Nina Solar White that I knew would fit five of the candy corns. Now I am not the best at masking, but I did learn a tip once somewhere that whatever you want in the front, you should stamp first. So the front goes first. So what I want to do is make three little candy corns in the front row and I want those a little bit lower than the two in the back. So I set up the first one centered on my piece of white cardstock and I did know that my left edge of my paper was right with the seven inch mark on the ruler. Once I had inked up and stamped that once, I moved it down an inch and a half and stamped my second candy corn. Now because my ink pad is slightly dry, I did have to ink it up and stamp it twice. Once I had the second one, I then shifted it back up to the 7 inch mark and then I went an inch and a half above that. You'll notice it does hang outside the ruler a little bit, but that's okay. Once my front row was done, I cleaned off my stamp so I would be able to set it up in a little bit. But before I figure out where it goes, I need to get my stamp masks over the candy corn. I do try to get these as lined up as possible with those black lines. And once they're in place, I am going to bring in that stamp and I played with it just a little bit to get the right like center between the two and the right height. 
Once I had it where I liked it, I again just inked these up and stamped it. And then you'll see after I have stamped the second one, I'm going to remove the mask. And this is probably my favorite part. It's almost like magic. Once again, at this point, you could use your scissors and cut this out, but I did take it off screen and cut it with my brother's scan and cut. And now I have a fun row of connected candy corn witches. To color my images, I'll be using Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers, and I will list all of the colors in that description box below. Now I do very basic coloring, but I will let you see how I color an entire image. I start with the yellow, and I go in with the light yellow, and I cover the entire area. Then I bring in the dark portion of the marker and add that where the shading would be. In this case, it is along the bottom curve of the candy corn. And then with the mid, I color from the dark just a little ways into the light just to blend that. Then to finish the yellow section off, I color the entire area or actually just from the mid to the light with that light marker again. That way I have different shades in the area. As I start to color the orange, you will notice that I use the same process and it's a little bit easier with the darker color to see the shading. Now on the little belt on the hat on top, I use the darkest yellow for the square and then later I will color in the band with the orange marker using the same technique. Now I know the top of the candy corn is white, but I do want to add just a little color so you can tell it's white. I don't even know what the purpose of this is, but it seems to be popular. So taking my lightest gray, I do again just where the shadows go with the marker, and then I brought in a blending pen, and this is actually from Arteza because I don't have a Spectrum Noir one, and I just blend that color out. That way there's just a slight hint of gray on the white area. As I work on finishing up the image that includes coloring in the band on the hat and coloring in the hat itself, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions I like to pose from time to time so we can get to know each other a little bit better. Today I would like to know, have you ever used stamp masking to make a group of stamps into one single image similar to what I have done with the candy corns? I would love to know your answers and you can leave those in the comment section below and make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered the question and would like me to see it. For myself, this is the first time I have ever done something this extensive with all of these stamps grouped together, especially just using a single image. I have in the past just done simple masking with maybe trying to put a plant into a pot but wanting to cover the stem, but this is my first group and I love it. I can't wait to hear your answers. Once all five of the images were colored in, I wanted to add a little bit of highlighting. So I brought in my white Posca pen in 0.7 millimeters and added some small lines along the left edge. This just makes the coloring look a little bit more like life, like there was a light source looking down on it. I will tell you I have tried many paint pens and gel pens and I find this white Posca to be the best that the color from underneath does not bleed through and it usually stays a nice crisp white. Now I'm going to start working on the card front. I cut a piece of white cardstock, the same size that the card base will be when folded, and I'm going to do some ink blending and stenciling with this yellow ink using the Drifting Confetti stencil from Not Too Shabby. I thought this would add a nice festive feel to the card. Now to start out, I'm going to be using just the ink and blending from the bottom of the cardstock up toward the top so you'll see the highest concentration of color is at the bottom. Now once I have the saturation I want on the bottom piece, I am going to bring in the stencil and do the same thing but this time through the stencil. Again, just blending from bottom to top with it lighter at the top and then when I go to remove the stencil, you'll see the background is mostly yellow 
but the little confetti stand out because they do have more ink. Off camera, I cut an orange scallop frame to keep with the color scheme from the card, and I'm gonna place this with art glitter glue centered onto the piece that we just stenciled. Once I have that centered as best as possible and straight across, I did set that to the side to dry for about five minutes while I moved on to a little more stamping. Here is a look at my card itself. I have already cut and scored it, but before I fold it and put the card front on, I do want to add some stamps to the inside. I will be using the candy corn stamp as well as the Happy Halloween sentiment. Now I do want the sentiment to be more bold, so I pulled in an orange ink that I'll ink that up with, and then to keep it a little bit more faint in case I need to write over it, I will be stamping the candy corn in yellow. I just like how I can get the sentiment on the inside and a little extra decoration. Now that all of the card parts are ready, I can put the card together. After folding the card base, I added adhesive to the back of the stenciled piece and that does fill the entire front of the card completely. And then to add a little extra dimension, I had put foam tape on the back of my candy corn coven and that got popped up right in the middle of the frame. I finished the card off screen by adding some yellow bling and here are some close up looks at my finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.